But let's talk about tiered pricing. So we're used to when we go grocery shopping, there's not just premium brands and lower price brands. The stores themselves have their different own brands in the value range, which would be like their bottom tier. The standard range is the middle tier and the luxury range, which is, would be the top tier, obviously. And we can get more complicated than this. So if they have a, a weight loss range too, that also might be priced somewhere in between those. It might have more than one weight loss range with different pricing tiers or a vegan range with different tiers. But let's just keep it simple. Let's just stick to the, the bottom, middle and top tiers. So again, there's two ways that either your suppliers or you as a seller are likely to use tiers. So one is where you genuinely get more features the more you pay. We don't always see this in the shops. So when you buy groceries, for example, the luxury range, you would generally ex expect to have more features, not necessarily so with the value and the standard range, if you're comparing the value and the standard to each other. But you might pay very different prices for the bottom or middle tier, even though you're getting exactly the same product and features in return. If you pay for the top tier for your bookkeeping software, for instance, or you, you have a top tier for a subscription that you sell, the expectation usually holds out that there's more benefit in that top tier and features should equal a benefit, right? And the second way of looking at this though is all about packaging. So one person buys a block of cheese in the shop from the bottom tier and it comes in a plain bag. The next person pays extra for the exact same cheese, but that middle tier means they get it in a bag with a nicer design on the outside. Now I have bartered with a university professor using a block of cheese before. I'm not going to lie. It was from the luxury range because being a professor isn't as glamorous as some students might think. Perhaps I was conditioned to think that by another professor who pointed to the very sensible and aging car one day and said, if you want to go into academia, don't expect to drive a sports car. Perhaps that was some Darren Brown magic and their spidey sense told them I planned to buy a colleague a block of cheese, as you do. And they just wanted to make sure that their colleague got the perceived best. And if so, it worked. I was definitely influenced. But the next time you need a favour from someone and you don't know what to offer, you can't really go wrong if you find out first their feelings about cheese. So the person who paid extra, they can't make a hat out of their cheese. It doesn't come with an airlock seal on the bag. They, they might be able to barter with it. They're, they're welcome to try. They can't invoice someone in multiple currencies if we're using the bookkeeping example, of course. I mean, you definitely can't invoice someone in multiple currencies with a block of cheese. Don't be silly now. They're getting exactly the same as the bottom tier. They're just paying for different packaging. So with a product, this might be like an information product, for instance. This might be the difference between you paying for information and receiving that as a simple black and white PDF versus paying more and receiving it in a hardback with a good looking cover. So the contents are exactly the same inside. The person reading it should really get the same transformation, but the PDF or the digital only version sits in a folder on your computer or your phone. Well, if we're buying in the middle tier, we've got something we can display on a shelf and it feels more rewarding and lasting. And another obvious example of this is selling printables. So there's a lot of uh, bloggers and vloggers, especially selling financial spreadsheets or meal planners or goal journals. And the bottom tier usually means you print that yourself. There might be a bit of branding on what comes out your printer. Whereas the next tier is you buy a physical version of that product and it's in full color. It has a binder. It costs more to make, ergo it costs more to buy. Plus it's convenient. It's all done for you. So is there some way you could implement tiered pricing in your side hustle in a genuine way, whether people are either definitely getting more features the more they pay, or where the people who want to pay for convenience and something tangible have the opportunity to do that. And the time saving or the outcome from that is so huge that it's obvious you would pay extra. But this isn't something you do on day one, like on day one, keep it simple, have one service or product and one price. This is the kind of stuff you, you, you fiddle with later. It's okay to think about it in advance, but a bit too much to try on day one. In terms of your business expenses, like, do you have subscriptions or things that you pay for? When was the last time you compared what hard features you're getting for that? Do you actually have different abilities in the different tiers or is it just packaging? So I think when you start a side hustle, it's really easy to have like magpie syndrome and, and be like, oh, I've got to pay for this. Oh, well, I, I guess I've got to sign up for this as well. Well, and so-and-so's got this and they, they said it's, it's really useful. So I'll pay for that right away too. 
and uh, that that can snowball quite quickly. So if if bootstrapping is really important to you, would you consider paying less or going for the free version if it's just a difference in the way the information is presented? Or conversely, are you at a point where you should be looking at those higher tiers because you've been going for a while and you've hit a plateau and you need those features to grow? or you need the convenience that's on offer because the one thing you need to buy lately is time. So let me know what you think. I'll aim to have some more resources about this link to on the blog if you want to read more about this in the show notes. And maybe I can highlight some more specific examples or you can give me your examples. So one last thing on that, which is that sometimes the bottom tier is actually free. So now, unfortunately, there isn't a groceries equivalent where you can eat for free and choose to pay more when you're ready unless you're dumpster diving, I guess, or using an app like Olio in the UK. But this is really common with software. So I bet you can think of something you use just as the free version online. So like my friends and I use TubeBuddy for free on YouTube. And my YouTube channel is waiting in the wings at the moment, but I actually use it to research things like what I want to title these episodes because I have to do some form of keyword research anyway and YouTube is a search engine and also I do plan to have an active YouTube channel with the help of TubeBuddy so I may as well learn about search volume and, and competition for my exact terms sooner rather than later but perhaps you have nothing to do with selling software as a service I, I think the most common example of this with the the lowest barrier to entry in some ways is content creators giving away information for free and assuming that the the only way or the easiest way to monetize that is just ad revenue or commissions but if an audience is asking for it there might be a profit margin there in selling a version of your content instead so if you're a content creator and the majority of your content is free that's then the entry level so the same thing applies you can either charge to provide some content that gives a benefit that can't be found for free because it allows your audience to do something that just just isn't listed anywhere else in your free content or it might just be packaging blogging and vlogging by its nature tends to quickly create a mind map of ideas that aren't necessarily in a logical order it's a bit like the blob or a 1950s b movie so you had this tiny channel or blog the next thing you know there's just mind goo everywhere or if you've been going for a long time you just might have too much content for a newcomer to wade through by themselves and there are three ways around that too like i use a start here page but you can only put so much on that before it gets overwhelming so if you can repurpose your free content either into a series of steps of how to do something instead of someone trying to work out from the hundreds of thousands of words that you've already written if you can give someone a more concise roadmap so they know exactly how to begin approaching that content and that lets them only pay attention to the stuff they really need for their goal instead of randomly clicking and trying to make sense of you having emptied out 10 years worth of what goes through your brain some people will definitely pay for that and it genuinely has value so it only takes two seconds to reseal a bag yourself on a block of cheese so why pay more if the cheese inside is the same but if it's going to take someone hours days weeks or even longer to do what they want to do and get information or or print your 300 page planner then they have to either be very determined or very strapped for cash if that's instead of paying for an unbelievable shortcut 